Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. A cordial welcome on behalf of the organizers, the Aspen Institute Germany and the Southeast Europe Association to the second day of the Civil Society and Think Tank Forum One in the framework of the Berlin process. We are confident that the great interest that uh, our panels and our working groups have been uh, met with yesterday will continue today. Um, should you have missed one of the panels yesterday, uh, we are happy to announce that the videos are already available uh, on our platform and you can find them and watch them uh, on by clicking on the video uh, sign on our agenda. This morning we start with our panel discussion uh, five, strengthening economic cooperation in the Western Balkans. And this panel will be moderated by Richard Grievesen, Deputy Director of the Vienna Institute for International Economic Studies. The floor is open for you, Mr. Grievesen, to introduce your panel. Uh, I wish you a fruitful discussion. Thank you. Thank you very much. So um, hello, uh, welcome also from my side. I'm Richard Griefsen, Deputy Director of the Vienna International, uh, Vienna Institute for International Economic Studies. And it's my pleasure, uh, great pleasure to, to chair this panel today. I think it's a great panel and a very interesting topic. We are tasked with, uh, in the next hour, discussing strengthening economic cooperation in the Western Balkans. I think this is a very important topic. It's always been an important topic, but maybe even more so in light of the COVID pandemic. And I'm interested also to hear what the speakers think about how the last year or 18 months has changed this whole discussion. Our task in particular, as you see from the agenda, is to discuss the common regional market. So the new initiative from the end of last year and how that can contribute to deeper regional economic integration, also economic development um, in the region. We have a really, I think, interesting panel with a really complementary, I think, um, uh, focus and expertise as well. And so I think it will be especially interesting to hear the exchange. I would like to introduce them briefly before we start. So we have uh, State Secretary Claudia De Vos from the German Federal Ministry for Economic uh, Affairs and Energy. We also have Tanya Misevich, the Deputy Secretary General of the Regional Cooperation Council, of course, a very important body in this whole in this whole process. And we have Silvana Moisovska from the uh, professor of the Institute of Economics, University of SS Cyrillis and Methodius, I hope I got that right, uh, in, in uh, Skopje. A uh, bit of housekeeping before we start. So we only have an hour, uh, so it's quite tight time. Uh, we're not going to have uh, PowerPoints or, or anything like that. We're going to go straight into the questions. I will ask uh, a question of each of the panelists first, a more general question to lead us into the debate. And then we will turn the floor straight over to you, the audience, for your input and questions. You have two options if you want to ask questions. You can either raise your hand and turn your microphone on and ask the question, or you can type in the, well, if, you're, if you have this in English in the Q&A, if you're in the German speaking world in the F&A, box, you can, you can type your question, uh, I can see them all, I will read them, and, and I will try to group them and ask them uh, of the panelists. Um, so I will start uh, with a question uh, for, uh, for the State Secretary, for, for Ms. De Vos. Um, we have the, the, the new initiative on the common regional market, of course, Germany plays an important role in that. You are, as we know from this whole event, playing a very important role in particular uh, this year. What I wanted to ask you to start with was, we know in the past a key challenge in, in all regional uh, cooperation initiatives in, in the economic sphere especially, or well, not only in the economic sphere, has been this potential uh, issue between regional economic integration and European or EU economic integration. It seems reading you know, the text and, and what came out of, of, the, of the new initiative at the end of last year, there's quite a focus on trying to think about this issue and try to address it in the new plan. Do you think that you know, this challenging issue has been addressed in the new plan? And how do you see this, this process moving forward? 
Yes, thank you very much, Richard. And uh, hello to everybody, to my co-panelists, uh, all ladies, which is uh, very rare, <laughs> if I may say so. Um, and to, to ladies and gentlemen, uh, all around uh, Europe, at least, I assume, uh, maybe even further. Uh, good morning uh, to everybody. Um, yes, I mean, you have been addressing uh, the question on, on the, the common regional market and uh, how uh, this can bring things uh, further. Um, well, I think it is the right approach. Um, it, it can be a catalyst for more economic integration um, of the Western Balkans into Europe and specifically into the single market. Um, of course, we have tried already before, yes. Um, but um, I, I think if we look at the, at the economic structures in the Western Balkans, there are, of course, at first, similar economic structures of all the Western Balkan countries because they concentrate still very much uh, their economies on, on agriculture, on medium tech manufacturing, on uh, state-run energy sector. Uh, but on the other hand, they are all at different stages of um, their transition uh, into a well-functioning uh, market economy. And in, in that respect, I, I can see and experience shows <laughs> to me that um, if countries succeed in attracting investors by con uh, consistently uh, continuing reforms, then they will also manage to diversify their um, export portfolio. And if that uh, happens, uh, they will be able to integrate much easier into uh, intra-regional trade. Um, which then gives them much more uh, economic ground to be integrated in the value chains with Europe, with the EU uh, 27, and in that respect into the single market. So um, I, I see this uh, common regional market initiative uh, very positive. Um, of course, uh, it cannot be the only solution uh, to... Uh, uh, bring the Western Balkans closer to, to Europe because we, we have to see it um, um, in the context of uh, a mixture of instruments, if I may call it, uh, because it is quite clear that, I mean, over 70% of the trade of the Western Balkan countries is with Europe. So um, we have to make sure that we at the same time uh, continue helping um, the Western Balkans via EU instruments, and if I may say so, uh, also uh, with a helping hand from uh, uh, bilateral <laughs> countries like, like Germany in that respect. And as you know, we have a long standing history of now seven years in trying to, to give advice uh, to Western Balkan countries, uh, the whole Berlin process, of course, initiated uh, by Germany, as the name tells us. Um, and I could be more precise in, in outlining all the um, ideas and initiatives we have been uh, putting on the table, um, uh, starting from our purchasing initiative, for example, our skills export program, um, our um, administrative uh, cooperation programs where we can offer on the ground help uh, to the Western countries in order to uh, get their reforms done, in order to get, uh, for example, uh, their competition authorities into the right shape. So there is a series of things which I would see uh, all together in one basket, <laughs> a mixture of instruments, as I call it, um, of which the common regional market is, is one and an important one, but not the only one. Great, thank you. I will turn now uh, to, to Tanya Misevich from the, from the Regional Cooperation Council. I mean, if we look back through the, the, the last couple of decades of regional cooperation initiatives, including in the economic sphere, we see a lot of successes. We see a lot of good work done, of course, maybe especially by by your organization. But we know also that there are still barriers. There have been difficulties, there have been some disappointments. In your opinion, I mean, what are the main issues? What are the main challenges in terms of going further with regional cooperation? 
Do you think that these are adequately addressed? Is, is, is the current approach the, the right approach now? And do you see maybe, and this is an interesting question, I think, can the pandemic help in a way to, to break down the remaining barriers? I'm thinking about the green lanes, for example. I mean, is, is, is there, could some positive come out of this, do you think? Thank you very much. And uh, as Madam State Secretary said, it is uh, always a pleasure to participate with the smart ladies uh, at the panel, especially if we are talking on something which traditionally uh, within the Western Balkans would be a man job. Uh, so how to organize the economy and politics. And I will start answering to your um, uh, questions, uh, Richard, um, pointing out what the Madam State Secretary said rightly, um, um, trying to explain what are the challenges uh, for the um, uh, regional cooperation, I will say even the pursuit for regional integration. And that is uh, our understanding that I hope now we are uh, start to clearing up that the regional integration is a replacement for the European integration. That means that if we cooperate and even integrate in the region between the Western Balkan six, that that will jeopardize each and every of the European integration path. That means uh, the pursuit for the membership, which is absolutely not true. It actually helps the European path as common regional market and all measures and all activities envisaged in that document is our internal alignment in accordance with the European standards. So that means if we are progressing in creating internal regional market, we don't have any other standard but to borrow the standards existing for uh, building creating and building uh, the European market, which is again our obligation in accordance with each and every of the SAA, Stabilization and Association Agreement, but also harmonization in terms of the uh, um, uh, uh, harmonization in terms of our negotiations towards uh, EU membership. So I hope that the first challenge to understand properly what does it mean to uh, cooperate and integrate the Western Balkan six among themselves, that this is not the replacement is now fading away. Um, uh, the, the second uh, big challenge is then uh, going uh, hand in hand with this, um, uneven level of European integration uh, um, of the Western Balkan six. And that's why you can hear the leaders of each and every of the Western Balkan six economies asking for advancement in the negotiation process for others. So uh, they are meeting regularly and they are calling now for opening of the negotiations with both, both North Macedonia and Albania, also upgrading the status uh, uh, in terms of Bosnia and Herzegovina. Uh, and again, visa liberalization for uh, Kosovo. That, that, is, that is something which also proves the ownership uh, uh, of the process, which is, uh, which is extremely, um, uh, e extremely important uh, development. Um, and the third challenge is how to understand the need for the regional integration, cooperation, and then integration. I think that we also, with the pandemic, and that is the answer to your last question, uh, over pandemic, we realized that the regional cooperation is actually something that we need because of ourselves and not because fulfilling one of the criteria for the membership to the European Union. And the green lace is a beautiful example. So um, if I may be even personal, I was there from the very beginning. It was 10 days after the start of the pandemics when uh, we realized that the trucks have a huge problems on the borders. Um, internal uh, Western Balkan six borders, and that soon all of us living here as a citizens uh, um, of uh, Western Balkan countries, we are going to face the shortage, not only in terms of the medical supply, but also even food. 
so we gather together, first of all, our colleagues from the regional organizations, we, RCC, uh, transport community and SEFTA, and they were very instrumental to use all their potentials and contacts to build something which we are very proud of. We now uh, have the common, common uh, border crossings, aligning the even time um, uh, working hours, uh, introducing the certificates which will be accepted and acknowledged. The only thing that we are missing is to enlarge the green lanes with the EU neighboring countries. And that is uh, the, the next steps which is needed uh, and, uh, uh, and important. Uh, so challenges a lot uh, exist, but still um, with a little time and uh, a lot of invested will, political will, we can overcome them um, and as we showed up to now. Okay, uh, I will go now to, to Silvana. Um, Tanya raised an interesting point, I think, about you know, the, the, the potential dichotomy between European integration and, and, and regional integration, and argued, I think, quite strongly that the, the, the two things can absolutely go together. I, you and I, Silvana, have exchanged on this in the past, and I think you have at times had a bit of a, of a different view. I wonder how you see it today, you know, in light of the pandemic, in light of the, the new plan at the, at the end of last year. Do you think this is now something that can really work in combination or is there still a danger that regional integration um, in a way comes ahead or is prioritized over European integration of the region in an economic sense? Uh, you're, you're muted still. Thank you, Richard, and greetings to all. It's a really interesting panel. Uh, regional cooperation has been something that uh, was uh, on the agenda of the Western Balkan for a very long time, but uh, it was done uh, mostly focusing on one dimension separately, either it's trade or transport and so on. Uh, in the latest efforts uh, done by the European Union and the countries and channel through the Regional Cooperation uh, Council, we have something that um, actually brings together several dimensions and uh, brings together trade, investment, uh, mobilization and so on. So that gives a bit of different platform, but still it's very difficult to change the pattern uh, and uh, to make the economy to shift towards the region. Uh, we had indeed um, previously a debate about uh, these issues. And uh, if you look at the data, the region is trading with the region uh, very little. It's around nine, 10%. So uh, most of the countries uh, and most of the companies focus their trade towards the European Union. And that is because for, uh, for such a long time, all the efforts uh, were uh, focused towards the European Union, the EU integration. And now I must say, unfortunately, that the process of lagging of EU integration of the countries, and I must be open and say, uh, loss of the credibility of the European Union in the region, that actually contributes to reinforcing the idea of regional integration uh, within the Western Balkan countries. But in order to do that, uh, to reinforce the idea and to implement it in practice, there is actually a need uh, for um, uh, initiatives like green lines, like uh, mutual recognition of the um, different certificates like sanitary, phytosanitary and so on people, uh, uh, things that uh, people in the business deal with uh, that every day. On the paper, with all these documents that the uh, political leaders are signing, uh, everything looks perfect and it uh, probably seems feasible. But uh, when uh, you ask people from the business sector, they have lots of obstacles and they are looking that, okay, EU is bigger market. If I have to uh, do all these compliances that uh, I need to do all this to fulfill different requirements, then I'll do that. 
uh, with regards to the requirements of the European Union, not the countries in the region, and they differ very often, because I have a bigger market and the prospects of the business are bigger. So the regional integration must be put into realistic terms of what are actually the obstacles. There are lots of studies done in this um, sense. And uh, I was talking uh, previously on, uh, I believe it was uh, an Aspen uh, conference about the need of uh, uh, putting policy content into the regional integration initiative. So far, it has been uh, mostly political. So now there are some steps of making, uh, of uh, transferring it into the, the policies of individual countries, and uh, that's necessary uh if we want to have some progress on the other hand um another thing is important and that is um, there is need of certain change in mental in in mindset of people of politicians in the region because uh, uh in the investment dimension of the regional cooperation uh, there is an idea to align the investment policies of the countries but then on the other hand, if you ask uh, the politicians in the countries about their investment policies uh, in attraction of uh, foreign investors, they will really mention the region. They're always uh, thinking as a country. So this connection must be done. And in order to do that, I think the region needs to uh, use uh, all the resources it has. So uh, changing from the political to policy content, according to me, is still the major challenge in order to uh, make the regional integration working. But uh, personally, I don't think that these processes are actually contradictory, but they are not perceived like that in the region. And that is something that should be changed. Thank you. Thank you, Silvana. I think you raised really a very interesting point. Uh, there are some questions starting to come through, but I would actually like to, to put this back to the to the other speakers first, because I think it is very important. So, I mean, if we look at the, you know, the surveys, the, the Balkan barometer, we see among people in the region a very strong buy-in for regional cooperation. It's very popular everywhere. But uh, Silvana's raising the issue of the buy-in. I mean, you mentioned a bit the business community, but then also the political elites, the, the full buy-in to this process. I mean, how much of an issue is this and how can we address it? I would put that first to, to State Secretary DeVos, please. Uh, thank you, Richard. Well, um, I was not surprised by what Silvana said on this, I must be honest, because I know this from, from Europe, uh, from EU 27. I mean, uh, of course, we have the single market, but when it comes to attracting investment, then, of course, everybody is very selfish. Uh, and we're trying to compete for the best uh, investment uh, conditions, uh, of course, of course, in line with the state aid law. I mean, this has to be uh, kept in mind. Um, but, but still, as you can see, there, there is some competition. So if we transfer that to the Western Balkans now, um, OK, I think we have to live with with some sort of egoism. Um, but still, when we come to the point that working together in regional economic um, cooperation means, economically speaking, more benefit to all of them, then I think we have we've done it. What, what do, you, do I mean in concrete with it? Let's say uh, we have an investor who would invest in Serbia in uh, opening up an investment for the product X. Uh, and then he needs, um, um, as a supply chain, let's say in Albania, uh, for bringing the spare parts of product Y. Um, then, of course, people will understand that yeah, there is an, an extra benefit for the region uh, if they work together. I mean, this is for me the, and Silvana can probably as an economist uh, uh, prove that <laughs> much better than, than I can as a lawyer. Uh, but then I think there is the win-win situation for everybody which could overcome such egoism. Okay, and, and Tanya, please, yes. 
I could not agree more with what Silvana has started uh, uh, to discuss here, uh, here. I think that we discussed already that um, uh, pursuing the policies uh, is still novelty for us. We still do not grasp here in the Western Balkans that um, we are supposed to create policies and not to be driven by only European policies in that respect. But on the other hand, that is what actually common regional market as an action plan is all about, to um, align ourselves, I mean, internally within the Western Balkans. So in order to offer the relatively equal uh, uh, opportunities for the uh, investors, we first of all have to map, monitor the situation with the uh, um, uh, investment climate in the region, which is one of the obligation according to the common regional market. And then to try to offer the same uh, uh, possibilities uh, uh, for, uh, for the investors in each and every of the Western Balkan six. But much more than this, um, according to the action plan of the common regional market, uh, very important things, and that is the reason why I'm now in Tirana, and immediately after this meeting, we are going to discuss the mutual recognition of academic qualification and qualifications. Uh, that means that my diploma from Belgrade would be recognized immediately wherever uh, I am in the Western Balkans, which is a huge novelty for all of us. It's not only uh, the, um, uh, the university diploma, but also certificates of any type. For instance, I know that you are aware of the fact that we are lacking the constructive workers in the region. So commuting now, it's not easy. Uh, so we cannot borrow the uh, constructive workers from uh, Albania to work in Bosnia because there is no uh, condition. So, um, we are working in terms of creating a common market, but as the European common market, it cannot be created overnight. There are a lot of uh, moves and elements um, uh, that has to be aligned among ourselves in order to progress and fully use this capacity, even for the investors. Okay. I'll come back to Silvana for one more question before, before we go to the floor. Um, one aspect of, of, of this issue is the, the idea of the, the Western Balkans as a single investment space and the, the, the creation of, of, of a market of 18 million, which is, would allow countries to attract investment theoretically much more easily than small countries on their own. If you combine that with the pandemic and the discussion about nearshoring and the idea that maybe German firms, Italian firms, will be much more willing to invest in a place like the Western Balkans or close by than they were before the pandemic because they're worried about extended supply chains. I mean, do you think this is realistic, this idea that the region can really function as a single investment space can really, I mean, State Secretary Devos talked about competition between countries for, for investment. Is, is there a way also here that the pandemic can, can force a positive change, do you think, or do you think this whole nearshoring uh, hope, it, which is quite widely discussed at the moment, also I think in the German media, um, do you think it's maybe a bit unrealistic? What pandemic certainly brought into the academic terms is that uh, it is possible to cut the costs, which is uh, most important in uh, operation of any business, if the work is done uh, in the uh, most productive way. Uh, it, uh, the pandemic showed that working from home uh, cut the costs very much into uh, certain industries. And also it is important if it's possible to cut the transport costs. So uh, there is a possibility of shifting the businesses into the regions that are closer. The state secretary rightly pointed out uh, supply chains and uh, that is something that the region should work on. But, and actually that is the key of how to converge the uh, individual, but the national investment policies with uh, creation of a single investment policy. Uh, 
Uh, the idea here is when the countries are looking for investors, they actually should look for uh, investors uh, that will uh, look at the region for uh, at the region as a whole market, not uh, um, most of the investments in uh, the Balkans are in Serbia because it has the largest market from all the Western Balkan countries. But the idea is actually to uh, sell the market as uh, the region as a market. So this could uh, bring to creation of certain single investment policy, but I must be realistic that we are from far from it uh, uh, because we lack infrastructure. If we are selling the region as a single market or as a market to a certain investor, we have to have proper transport infrastructure that is not present at the moment. And then we also need to have educational policies and other policies that are more or less aligned. Tanya here talked about mutual recognition about uh, of uh, qualifications, and that's great, but it comes after 10 or 15 years of talking about um, this topic. So uh, the things must go faster in order to achieve something. And it's good that we started with a plan and that we are doing something. If we are doing something, then the people living in the region will get an impulse that this regional cooperation might function. We are not very different from each other. and. Uh, uh, people uh, do not have um, the idea of regional cooperation as something very strange, neither uh, business community. But uh, if the policy, uh, the uh, politics and policies were focused towards the European Union for 15, 20 years in all these countries and nothing than uh, signing formal papers on regional integration has been done on the ground, then you cannot expect that regional cooperation will start to live immediately. These steps that are done now uh, are good steps. And the pandemic, uh, it's unfortunate uh, case, of course, for the whole economy, but it might bring um, some advantage to the region as a region because we are close to the European Union and companies will probably like uh, to shift their businesses to locations where uh, that are geographically more closer to them. So uh, there are definitely uh, opportunities that are open at the moment and uh, they should be looked at and uh, transformed into action plans and into actions, if uh, we are, uh, we would see that something has been uh, is going on, and there are results of any activity, the regional one, then the process will will start to develop. Okay, I would like to go to the floor now. Um, we have, I don't see any raised hands at the moment, but I have some questions in the Q and A, or as I said, if you're in Germany or Austria, the the F and A. The first one question, and, and please um, type questions that you have or raise your hand and, and I will come to you. I see a question uh, actually that leads on quite well from this discussion about FDI. For, this is from Gudrun Steinacker. What about a sustainable green economic development? Many FDIs contradict this. They're only interested in low wages. I mean, I think the, the, the issue of being stuck in a, in a trap of competing basically race to the bottom on wages is definitely a relevant point for the Western Balkans. The question goes on, regional cooperation would only make sense if it's promoting sustainable development. Construction of small hydropower plants is very detrimental to the unique biodiversity of the region, as well as increasing industrial agriculture, mass tourism, deforestation, phenomena also fostered by regional cooperation. Uh, maybe I'll come first to State, State Secretary Devos on this. How would you respond to this question? Yeah, thank you. Yes, I will do so in a minute. Let me just add one thing uh, to give maybe a little bit more positive um, a hint uh, to what Silvana said on uh, how things last too, too long. I have a, a counter example, uh, namely the uh, getting rid of the roaming fees um, uh, in the Western Balkans, because 
I, I compare it to the very difficult process we had in Europe because we, the Germans, uh, came up with this idea under our last but one EU council presidency in 2007 to get rid of the roaming fees. And, and it was a, a very, very difficult exercise um, and to do it smoothly and step by step and so on. So the fact that the Western Balkans have agreed here on getting rid of the roaming fees so quickly, I mean, was, uh, was uh, absolutely, um, uh, well, a, a positive example of, of how things uh, can be done. Okay, now I'll come to, to the question on, uh, on um, um, greening and um, uh, sustainable sustainability. Um, yes, I mean, of course, uh, we also have to make sure, or the Western Balkans have to make sure when um, coming closer to the European Union, that their politics are in line with the broad strategic objective the European Union has. And one of those objectives is, of course, the Green Deal and all the concrete proposals we are looking forward to um, to get from the Commission uh, in, in this summer, the, the Fit for 55 um, um, proposals, for example. So our idea in, in Germany, um, in the continuation of the Berlin process, is to talk about this uh, green agenda in the Western Balkans at the occasion of our uh, business conference on uh, June 30s. Um, and as the name says, we will do it with the business community um, and we will do it in the same way we're going to discuss it in, in Europe, at least from the Ministry of Economics point of view, namely to try and combine the Green Deal issue with an industrial strategy, because we think we cannot do it against the business community, we must do it together with the business community and we must make a business deal out of it because um, if we can combine it in such a way that it will mean an extra growth strategy for the European economy, then it's even better. So just to tell you that the same what we are going to discuss in Brussels for EU 27 will also be to be discussed um, with the Western Balkans and the business community on June 30. So, um, yeah, here we are. Uh, we are addressing this issue and uh, I hope this uh, will uh, uh, convince Gudrun that uh, things are on the agenda. Would Tanya Savanna, would you like to comment on this question of, of, of sustainable green economic development and combination with FDI? Um, <clears throat> not on FDI, but <clears throat> sorry, Silvana, if I jump in, you wanted to say, huh? okay. Uh, not on the FDI, but on the green. Um, so um, let me just remind all of our participants uh, and people that are listening to us on the Green Deal for European Union, the document that was endorsed back in 2018, if I'm not wrong, and that also calls for the Green Agenda or a Green Deal for the Western Balkans. And that document has been endorsed. And as a document, it's important to state that um, uh, so the Western Balkan six agree to follow the green agenda for the European Union, which means fully decarbonize Europe until 2050 with all measures that, of course, are needed to be achieved in that uh, respect. So it's not only decarbonization, not only huge task, uh, but also uh, in this is introducing um, a new areas like the recycling, like the biodiversity and working on this. Um, and of course, uh, the uh, green economy, which will be the basis, and that is the answer to the question, which will be the basis uh, for uh, applying for uh, working in the Western Balkans. So uh, the obligation to assess uh, all plans for developing industry uh, will have to have the 
green light from the uh, environmental ministry in each and every of the Western Balkan six and be in accordance with the, uh, uh, with the green agenda. Just one sentence, we are continuing working with the Western Balkan six in order to devise a plan for this. And we hope that during Slovenian presidency, we are going to, um, Western Balkan six, of course, not the RCC, uh, are going to endorse that plan to how to achieve 2050 uh, in that respect. Okay, S Silvana, please, you wanted to add something? Uh, well, I'm very happy to hear what State Secretary uh, said that uh, EU is also putting this on the agenda with regards to the integration process of the Western Balkans. And, Tanya already explained the initiative, so it's a very important issue. And uh, I would just add that a bit of more focus should be done on the implementation of the policies that are already existing in the countries, because uh, uh, there is a lot of uh, harmonization of the legislation with the EU already done in the uh, national uh, uh, legislation in all of the countries, I believe, but when it comes to the implementation, there is uh, maybe there is a uh, need of uh, specific assistance of the European Union in order uh, how to do it in order to attract uh, good clean investors uh, instead of uh, investments that are actually polluting. So that would be the addition. Okay, I think there's a lot more we could say on this. It's a very interesting topic, but I see now a few more questions and I don't want to uh, stop anybody asking that question. So I see uh, one more in the chat, uh, which I will ask first. And then I see two raised hands, Kori Udovici and Yalitza Minich. I will come to you afterwards. So the next question in the chat, how do the panelists see economic cooperation of the Western Balkans in light of the mini Schengen initiative? So we have discussed various aspects so far, but not specifically mini Schengen. Maybe uh, Tanya, I would come to you first on this. Openly, honestly, uh, we still hear a lot of um, mixing between mini Schengen and the common regional market. Uh, basically, uh, common regional market was created as the plan, uh, listening very carefully the uh, need and the idea that was raised back in 2008-19, if I'm not wrong, uh, um, uh, from uh, three countries, uh, regional countries, uh, three countries from the Western Balkans. Uh, that they spoke about for freedoms, but uh, uh, putting the emphasis on the free movement of people. The problem with the mini Schengen was that it was not inclusive. So it was only half of the Western Balkan six. And listening very carefully, what were the needs? Uh, we incorporated all of those needs for freedoms into the common regional market, but plus we added also other things which were needed, like the digital, like the investments, and of course, green agenda, uh, which, cre which was created up to now. So why we still have this mixing of the initiatives? As um, my personal uh, feeling, I don't mind whatever you would like to call it, the common regional market activities, if they pursue the activities, that is the most important, and if they deliver the result. But we also have to acknowledge the fact that mini Schengen is, excuse my French, much more, much more sexy than common regional market on the road towards the European integration. Uh, but uh, uh, help me with this English saying, it's not important uh, the, the color of the cat if it ca catch the mouses. Um, so for me, it's important to work on the deliverables to work together all Western Balkan states with the regional organization and together with uh, Germany in preparing the summit, Berlin summit, which we hope will be uh, another step forward for endorsing the necessary, uh, the important measures. Thank you, State Secretary. I saw you you're nodding in agreement. I mean, uh, it, it is more sexy. That's true. I mean, everybody remembers and under everybody understands exactly what it means, but the point, I suppose, is also that, as Tanya said, it needs to be inclusive, it needs to involve everybody. And 
Yeah, you're right. Um, exactly. Yeah, I was nodding twice. I think uh, the one was on inclusive, um, as Tanya said. Uh, indeed, that that is very important to, to us. And the second uh, time I was nodding was on sexy, uh, because I I I, <laughs> I like expressions uh, uh, which uh, make it quite clear and and which are understandable for for everybody. So in complete agreement with with what Tanya said. Okay, I, I will move now, I think, to the to the to those who have raised their hands. So as I said, we have two questions. The first one is Cori Udovici. Could you please um, turn on your microphone and ask your question? Yes, hello. Thank you very much for giving me this wonderful opportunity. And I really enjoyed everybody's uh, discussion, but particularly want to congratulate Professor Moisotska on emphasizing the importance of really focusing on policy, on change on the ground, and not only on politics or not mainly on politics when looking at the regional integration. And in that, I would like to just ask a question. It bothers me, it worries me that our research shows, and I'm speaking of the Center for Advanced Economic Studies, that um, the efficiency seeking uh, FDI, by its nature, by the nature of what the global economy is today, usually needs very little local inputs. They come, employ people, employ very local companies for basic support, uh, uh, fixing the premises, building the premises. But their, their economic activity is global and it goes, flies over the region. And their presence is unlikely to contribute much to integration. There are efforts, when I say integration, on the ground, having more people trading between themselves across national borders within the region. That's what I'm talking about. Um, and yet this is the most desirable form of, of foreign investment. We can discuss what the contributions and the risks are of foreign investment that's market seeking. I'm not going to go into it. So my question to you, and it, I am asking it both to Professor Moisovska as does she see a potential and what kind? And I'm asking also uh, Ms. Miscevic, hello Tanya, uh, how much has the RCC thought about this? Is what and how much can be done to promote real structural, practical, regional integration on the ground? Um, uh, uh, at the level of what we usually call SMEs, that's really the domestic economy. Very small SMEs obviously cannot be looking much across the border, but there is a growing constituency of domestic capital, still really SMEs by international standards, but often employing more than 200 people, that could probably be sourcing and integrating more across regional borders. And I just wonder if, if this is something that you see as a as, 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 as a path of potential. Thank you very much. Thank you, very good, very interesting question, I think. Uh, Silvana, first, please. Thank you, Ms. Sudovicki. It's really, really important uh, question uh, because uh, most of the investments in the region are so-called outward processing uh, and uh, they're using here mostly the labor as uh, an input while uh, local inputs are really used. Uh, how to respond to this? Um, there is need actually of the local companies uh, to be aware that they should transform in order to address the needs of the foreign investors. We have um, an examples in uh, North Macedonia where foreign investors are looking for lo local inputs, but it takes time of the local companies to adjust an investment as well. Uh, so uh, this also uh, requires a good policy by the government uh, in order to help these local companies uh, to address better the uh, requirements of the foreign investors and it takes time but it is possible uh, to be. I, I believe that this, this issue has been, uh, been recognized as important in probably most of the countries and uh, there is also need in uh, 
adjusting the educational policies in order to uh, for them to uh, produce so-called uh, uh, staff uh, with uh, good qualifications that are able to produce the local inputs on the requirements needed by the foreign investors. Uh, it's a gradual process. It will take some time, but uh, it is important to put it into the policy. So I hope that Tanya will say they have uh, something already uh, put in their agenda to help the countries how to transform into uh, this issue. Thank you for this question. And it is definitely something that should be advocated further in order to uh, have better results on, in this area. Thank you. So, uh, Tanya, it would be interesting also then to hear from the RCC side uh, how you see this. Um, so, uh, thank you very much, Corey. Um, no surprise uh, of a very good question from you. Um, the, actually, the common regional market as a plan, as a, uh, the idea, uh, will not have uh, any added value if it's not helping the, um, uh, the basis or the, the uh, people, um, the ordinary people, citizens of the region or the companies, especially SMEs in the region. And uh, if you go and look to the plan and the idea that it is devising, uh, it's actually um, uh, trying to first of all, uh, create um, something which will be a database of the SMEs in the region to connect them all uh, working together and, of course, helping them. In that respect, the Chamber Investment Forum has been created. Uh, so all of our six chambers united themselves or cooperate much closer under the umbrella of the Chamber Investment Forum, which is the organizational side of that help and support uh, uh, to the SMEs. Actually, they were the one that promoted the region and the companies from the region in London, if I'm not wrong, it was 2019. 2019, beginning of 2019, unfortunately, because of the pandemics, it was not possible. And if I'm not wrong, they are going to promote the potentials uh, for working together with the Western Balkan SMEs in Dubai uh, fair uh, very, uh, uh, very, very soon. But um, uh, it also uh, have uh, the important element in uh, um, um, creating innovation and industrial uh, uh, area, uh, which will help actually, especially to the development of the SMEs. And last, but certainly not least, uh, it lays or it is based on the European investment uh, uh, program that we did not mention up to now, which has been devised not only to uh, develop the connectivity, big connectivity projects, but also um, it has um, funds for supporting development of the SMEs too, together with the COSME pro program that we are all from the Western Balkan 6 uh, are eligible. So uh, helping them organi organ uh, organizationally, it's in the hands of the <clears throat> common, uh, it's a, a KIF uh, Chamber Investment Forum, but also in supporting them to use the possibilities uh, of using funds uh, from the uh, from the European, uh, from the European Union. I wanted to bring also State Secretary Dervos on this. We are coming to the end of our time now when you have one more question. So I would like to bring in the question first and then State Secretary, you can respond to that and, and to the previous question if you want to. So we have a question from Yelitsa Minich. Can you please turn on your microphone and ask the question? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for this um, excellent debate. Uh, I think that we miss today somebody from the business sector maybe from the Chamber Investment Forum, uh, because in the Balkan barometer, the business community was even more optimistic than citizens in the Western Balkans. 
regarding uh, regional cooperation and um, uh, future ex uh, expectations. Uh, it is also very indicative that uh, after 100% taxes that uh, Kosovo raised for products from Serbia and Bosnia and Herzegovina, in uh, Serbia Kosovo trade uh, after uh, removing the taxes, uh, uh, trade recovered very fast, up to 70% of the previous level. So it means that uh, there is a, a, a rather vivid uh, business communication in the region. But there is the saturation of, of the trade flows in the region. And we need uh, regional value chains and uh, value chains, European value chains, to be um, installed more strongly in our region if we want to have a new step of regional cooperation at a much higher level because uh, only trade is not enough. We have to uh, look at the process uh, much uh, wide, more, more widely. And um, uh, just um, uh, comment on the mini Schengen. It was a device uh, in the period when uh, regional cooperation, especially regional trade, was practically uh, mostly blocked in the region because of the 100% taxes, at least between Kosovo, Bosnia, Serbia, but also problems in CEFTA. Then it was uh, some uh, um, blocking moves to other regional structures. So uh, Mini Schengen bought the time. Uh, Mini Schengen is no more necessary. Uh, so the common regional market is fulfilling the role of uh, Mini Schengen. Uh, but Mini Schengen achieved something. It openly raised the issue of regional labor market, and the regional labor market is the problem that we are going to face even more, and also uh, helped uh, facilitation of uh, border crossing, especially between Serbia and Macedonia. So uh, shorten the time, uh, one-stop shop, etc. So joint border crossing, and it showed, it demonstrated uh, how um, uh, useful it could be for the regional trade. So there are some results of Mini Schengen, but Mini Schengen is no more necessary. Thank, you, thank, you. thank is... you very much. Sorry to interrupt, but we are really very close to the end of our time yes. now. So I would like to go around the, the panel once more quickly for please very brief kind of 30 second uh, closing statement, either on this or, or on, the, on the previous question. So starting please with State Secretary DeVos. Yeah, thank you, Richard. Um, Yes, I think what Tanya described as the RCC is doing on bringing together uh, SMEs is, is the right way of doing so and uh, doing it with the chamber network and our German chamber, the IHK, is also uh, in the club and, and working with it. First remark. Second remark. Um, uh, on the ground, as the criticism was that uh, things are not looking into uh, the, uh, the local input questions, I mean, our purchasing initiative, which we launched in, two, launched in 2015, I think was very much um, focused on uh, including smaller companies. And we started with 20 German companies and 120 from the region. We're now with 60 Germans and about 200 uh, uh, from, from the region. So there must be small companies in. I know it, that they are. It's not only with the big ones. The contrary, we first uh, were lacking big ones in the club. So this is a very concrete example on including SMEs uh, into value chains. Third and last remark, um, as I said before, um, our skills expert program, I think, is something which, again, could help in what uh, Silvana said on that it takes time to prepare education and to prepare the people for working so internationally. Here, I think we can help 
in, in really preparing uh, the and giving the vocal uh, vocational training, which uh, some, at least of the German companies, expect from uh, their sub deliverers, uh, because then things have uh, that kind of quality which we need for the international market. Thank you. Thank you, State Secretary, for this very uh, comprehensive but also very uh, quick closing remarks. I appreciate it. Uh, Tanya, you, I know you have to go, you have a meeting, so, um, but please, 30 seconds, uh, final exactly. remarks. I just wanted to uh, thank both uh, Silvana and Madam State Secretary for extremely good discussion, and I'm sure that we can continue like this even more than one hour, but I am heading uh, uh, for the meeting of actually finalizing negotiation on the mutual recognition of qualification. Uh, so the work is going on, and that is the most important thing, and that is a still a, a goodwill, but also uh, you're, you're muted. Sorry, political will and understanding for developing that. So I'm sorry I have to, uh, especially Silvana, I'm sorry that I have to run immediately, but looking forward to for the next discussion uh, uh, on this or a different uh, topic. All the Thank best. You, Thank you. Uh, Silvana, last, last comments from you, please. I would just say that uh, apparently we all the countries need to be partners in this process, real partners, and uh, luckily we have uh, Germany and uh, other countries from the EU to help us in this process. I would say at the end that we need to set realistic goals to go maybe with uh, few realistic goals and to advocate that they are realized instead of going with a bunch of goals and uh, not really implementing much and uh, setting again agenda that way we could speed up the process so it is a process that is relevant for the region uh, but uh, we also uh, need to take care of the resources and we need to point out every time that uh, both processes have their uh, common dots, but we all we need to find them and uh, to connect them. It's this process is not contradictory. EU has always said that, but in order to uh, make that realistically not contradictory to the EU integration process, uh, we actually uh, need to, as a region and as European Union show that we are. Uh, implementing the process and uh, we are fulfilling the, the goals. Thank you, Savannah. So uh, I'm sorry we went three or four minutes over the time, but I think it was really a very interesting discussion. I want to thank all the speakers, excellent comments. It was really enlightening. We could have gone on, I think, really for a lot longer. Thank you to the audience. Thank you for the very good and stimulating questions. And uh, this will not be the end. We will discuss this a lot more in the future and. I'm already looking forward to that, so goodbye.